This is Cherry's World. Hey, if you're listening to Cherry's World Podcast on Apple Podcasts and iTunes, please give us a five star. Let us know what you think. Leave us a review. I want to hear from you. Thank you. Would you like to advertise on Cherry's World and have your product plays on Cherry's social media for the world to see? Email us now at cherriesworldpodcast at gmail.com for low introductory rates. Cherry's World Podcast. Get heard. Welcome to Cherry's World. Anyway. Anyway. How was your trip and being on set? I mean, oh my God. Okay, so out of my DMs, do you see the smile on my face? No joke. It was like going home. Yeah. You know, they had recreated the sets, uh, even though they look newly updated, they're very much the same. And then I was playing with my best friend again, who's more like my sister. Uh, the makeup lady actually made a comment. We ran into the trailer one day and we were talking and giggling and she goes, you guys are like two little school girls. Really? She said, we walked in acting like we were seven. Of course we're not, <laughs> but... Yeah, it, it felt like home. Is it, it the same? Good. Is it the, Is it the same, same people, people behind, behind the scenes? The scenes? Uh, uh, some of the same people, a bunch of new people, like uh, the producer David Duclan was there, the creator, and we had our original sound guy was there. Wow. Yes. Um, it was amazing. I actually have clips that I saved of him for when we do our whole Punky Brewster special. Okay, what is that? The Punky Brewster special, what is that? The Punky Brewster special, I think the week before our show airs, we need to dedicate a show, or the week it airs, like I don't know what day it's gonna come on yet, but mm -hmm. we need to dedicate a show that's all Punky. Okay. okay. Where about, we uh, uh, invite, okay. you and I invite Soleil in the house, wow. Freddie Prince Jr. in the house, and the kids in the house, and give the audience a chance to get to know my loved ones. Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking you're talking about something you about to do. You invite me to be part of this. This is, wow. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. You're part of Cherry's World, right? Yeah, I, I, yes, but. You still. are Cherry's World, right? Well, still. Yes. <laughs> that's above, that's above. Wow, that's, I almost feel like that's above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah, it's me and you, buddy. Right. So, so when, um, so when you got back, um, yeah. I know the pictures that you showed me, first of all, the studio, I was like, man, the picture you sent was so high def. Like, like what is it like just being like, what, what, what was it like behind the scene? You know, I like to know the behind the scenes stuff because the pictures you sent was like, I mean, I've never seen anything like that before. I mean, everything looks so like vivid. Like, like I think the TVs now are like, what, 4K? That, those pictures look 4K. Courtney, I took the pictures on my iPhone. <laughs> so I, know, I know, but the studio was set up. It had the lighting and everything, because like oh. I take pictures on my iPhone too. Those, like, what was it like just being like? I know it's totally different than what it was before, but like, well, it's totally different for because we were at Universal and before we were at NBC, so it was a totally different lot that we were on this time which is awesome. I've never shot at Universal before. So to come to Universal and shoot Punky is pretty amazing. So when you say Universal, you mean Universal Studios? Yes. So 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 you actually went through the theme park Universal Studios? No, not the theme. The theme park is kind of above. The studios are down below, but I will tell you that we passed like The Voice, uh, Will and Grace, and my show, The Good Girls, their production office was actually right next door to Punky Brewsters. How amazing. So, so, so when you say Unifer, because I'm, I, I, I've been to Universal, but the only thing I've been through was the, the, the theme park. So, yeah. where did they shoot at? It's below, like there's a whole, have you ever, did you go through like the Universal Studios tour? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. The actual tram actually went by our sound stage every day. So when you, how do you, where, where do you guys go in through? 
a gate. <laughs> like, I don't yeah, know. Like, you don't go into where, the, where 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 we would go into, right? Probably not. Could you guys go in and get on the tram? I don't know where you would go in and get on the tram. No, that's, but that's, my transportation is so cool to me to hear this kind of stuff. No, it was awesome. It was a great experience. It was really like I was a kid, you know, I went on the Universal Studio tour when I was a kid and watching the tram go by the soundstage every day was kind of it was cool. It was incredible. Hmm. So Lay and I are corny. We were like waving to the trams. Wow. See, that's the fact that you find that cool because I got they have this um at Florida, they have um uh, basically like an assembly of uh, the fast track, GM fast track. And it's not cool to me, but everybody else thinks it's cool. But I see it every day, so I don't find it cool. But, you know, so the fact that you find your job cool, that's a good thing. Okay, well, let's be real. I find parts of my job cool. Uh -oh. And it depends on which, which job it is, because all my jobs have not been cool. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that conversation, but yeah, Punky, everything about Punky is marvelous. Can you release any details yet? Um, I'm on it. Soleil's on it. Freddie Prince Jr.'s on it. Okay, okay. I can tell you that two of the kids that are on it, one is from um, Australia and two are from Texas. Oh, okay. Nice. Um, we have a we have a wonderful little Disney star on the show. I don't know if I can give you too much information about her, but I know that when I took a selfie with her, my kid was on my phone like, "Oh my god, you worked with her! She was on my show!" Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is gonna be this is gonna be a star-studded big deal. I think it's gonna be a big deal just because. Everybody has grown up with us yeah. and everybody's going to get to see us grow up. What I will tell you is there's not a lot of shows on where women have no issues, no problem. There's no cattiness. Yes. It is fun. It is love. Mm -hmm. It's real. We are real working women going through real life situations. And we are living real lives and so i think that people will like that all right i i actually sent you a message um you probably didn't get it though but is there a dog on the show i don't know that's one of the things that you might just have to wait and see oh. i can tell you it won't be brandon okay right right so. do you know somebody actually wrote me and they said like what happened to brandon and I was like, dude, are, are you serious? <laughs> and I didn't really know how to answer, but he ended up like being butt hurt. I guess I was supposed to keep the fantasy alive, but I was confused. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened to him? <laughs> I, don't know. Well, I don't know for sure, but it's been many years. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, right, right. Okay, okay, well, okay, that's natural. I'm thinking you about to say, you know, he got ran over or something. I, I probably no, no, okay. no, 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 no. Like, but I, I don't, you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I can read you something that really happened in real life. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get to the message because I actually posted it because I thought it was funny, but you thought I was like being mean and in a bad mood. And I was confused. So I had this guy walk up to me, right? True story. And he goes, hey, how's Hollywood? Right? And I looked at him and I was like, um, yeah, okay, well, Hollywood is built off of stories from somebody's mind. It's make-believe like Disneyland, you know, fake boobs, fake lips, fake hips, <laughs> fake booty. Fame is given and taken and it's all just, you know, entertainment. I say the ones that are smart enough to realize that it's fake seem to be okay with life. But the ones that think that it's real, end up killing themselves trying to live this life that doesn't exist. Dude looks at me and he goes, oh, I can see you're in a bad mood today. <laughs> and I was like, not, not really. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw I saw this and I was actually getting ready to text you like, hey, maybe you should take that down. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I was going to Uh Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean tell the truth. It, 
it's not bad to me, but I'm just worried. I mean, you told me about uh, the meeting you had, so you'll be okay. Hey, folks, this is your real estate agent slash investor, Andre Key. And I'm with Central Metro Realty, serving Central Texas. But I can also work in all 50 states, including Canada, helping you with your real estate issues and concerns. Whether you're a buyer, seller, investor, wholesaler, flipper, come to me with your real estate concerns. We definitely have the key. You can find me at keyofaustinhomes.com or Andre Key, Texas real estate agent on Facebook, or Team Key underscore TX on Instagram. Or just give me a call at 512-815-3539. Again, that's 512-815-3539. Andre Key, real estate agent, investor, reach out to me. Key is the last name, no gimmick. I just happen to be in real estate, and I have the solutions for you. What was it like um, performing in front of a live studio audience again? Oh my God. So I was so excited when the audience came in because you get this energy. You know, it's different when you're just taping and it's like a bunch of producers. The producers are just so worried about your performance and saying the words right. The audience is just there to have fun. They want to be entertained. So for me, the, the studio audience is what I live for. You know, those are the people who you've grown up with. Those are the people who are championing you. They want to see you win. They don't care if you mess up. If you mess up, it gives us all something to laugh about. Mm -hmm. they, they're there because they love you. And I'm there because I love them. Was the original Punky in front of a studio audience? Absolutely. Wow. So I, that's just so, so much props I give you. Be a kid, and I was just watching Punky the other day um, on the NBC app. Actually, it's on it's on a, a couple apps you can watch on the if you got Fire Stick. But um, I was watching the other day, and I was like, "Man, you were so young, so young." And I was a baby. I was six years old. And to be that much of a professional back then, and I'm like, "Wow." That's just good, man. That's all I can say. I was speechless. Oh, thank you, Courtney. You can watch, you know, you see it different as you, as a man watching that compared to as a kid, we just laughed and, you know, put ourselves in that, you know, in that apartment room. But, you know, as a man, I'm actually looking at everything. I'm looking at all the details and stuff, you know, so I'm like, wow, it's like you really were acting like at that age, like really acting. <laughs> That's just Wow. I was watching the episode. Oh, you probably do you remember the episodes? Um, vaguely. I mean, a few of them, like people won't let me forget the refrigerator episode. Um, people always talk about my parents dying episode, the drug, the, the just say no to drugs episode. So there's there's certain episodes that definitely stick out in my head. The we challenger were, we episode. Were watching the one with the girl, and I seen this girl before, I don't remember her name but she was like overweight and you were struggling on how to call her fat or she just kept, she had like an eating, I don't say she had an eating disorder, but you guys were working out. You're all trying to lose weight and stuff like that. And I was just like, wow. Yes. Vaguely, yes. I, I don't remember trying to call her fat, but yes, I do remember. Uh, Soleil and I were actually talking about our clothes on the, on the workout episode. I mean, that's just, that is, man, that kind of acting at that age. I mean, you guys are really just like babies and now adults. Like, that's, man, wow. <laughs> you did a hell of a job, so all I can say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It was fun. You know, I didn't realize when I was doing Punky that I was working. I was just hanging out with my homegirl, going to work, seeing my uncle. But and how? Because, like, you were doing, like, real acting on that show. I mean, you weren't just... You know, like my kids are doing extra roles where they just say, All right, go have fun, run around, and have fun. Like, you I mean, let's be real. I wasn't always good. Like, if you watch the pilot episode, I was a horrible little actress. My arm, I didn't know what to do with my hands. My arms kept going, Oh, punky. <laughs> well, like, I did hone in on my craft on the show, but it, it, it took a while. I don't know. I mean, the episodes I saw, you were quite the professional. So, thank you. I had a lot of fun. 
first. Punky's my home. I can't, I can't explain how grateful I am to go back to my beginning. Um, my beginning was beautiful. And to be able to go full circle, first of all, nobody, it's like very rare that you get that chance in the beginning, you know, but to be able to go back and do it twice, what a gift. I got it. Before I let you, before you get done, you got 10 more minutes? Yes. I got to ask you a couple trending questions real quick. Okay. Got them written down. Hold on. Oh, here's a big one. <laughs> got to get your opinion on this. Uh, rapper T.I. says he takes his daughter to the gynecologist to make sure she is still a virgin. You heard yes, story? I did hear about that. Even more mortifying, I heard that Pornhub offered her a million dollars to lose her virginity on their site. Well, I, 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 I can't believe that. I'm surprised he didn't shoot that plot. I got a T.I. story if you want to hear it one day. That, like, I feel so... Nothing is personal. Oh, wait, I'm so sorry. Right. I feel <laughs> so horrible for that little girl because... Yeah. That whole situation is mortifying. Even if that's what your dad does and those are like your house rules or whatever, like you don't want the world to know that. That's not something you put on social media. Yeah. And then for there to be a price tag put on your virginity, like, come on, world. It's just a little bit too invasive. It's just a little bit too much. I'm Where are our morals? I'm surprised they, they made that kind of offer because he is crazy. He is crazy. Like for real, for real, crazy. Like, like I, I met him. I had an altercation with him. So, yeah, and he's a he's a little man. So he's like, he ain't no punk though. He ain't no punk. That's what he's kind of sexy for that. He ain't nobody's bitch. Like, damn, Ti. Like, tiny, I ain't trying to move in on your man. I, you know, know he, he go for real. Like, he go for real. Oh. But what I've learned from this, like. I never even knew nothing about a, a, a um, what they call it. Damn, the, the word they've been talking about once once this story. Hold on, it's the uh, story. A hymen. The what? What'd you say? A hymen. Hymen. Yeah, I've never even heard that word before until the story. The hymen is the muscle that pops, and that's why women, you pop the cherry. You've heard of that, of course. Oh, so that's, that's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Cherry, I done had this conversation with three women, you being the fourth. And if they would have just told me that, then I would have understood. I've been asking, I'm like, they done told me all this imaginary stuff. I'm like, like I done seen my share of vaginas. Now, I, no way, well, I, didn't, I shouldn't say that. My I, name is Cherry, so I've been thrown the joke my whole life, you know? Ah, uh, okay. I still have men saying, oh, I'll pop your cherry, and then they're mad at me when I look at them and go, bruh, you're a little bit late. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so that's what it is. Because I've been trying to figure out, because I know that some people were saying that um, that even if she doesn't have sex, you can still, it can still yeah. be yeah. yeah. Yes. So he was like, she don't ride bikes, she don't horseback ride, so it still should be there. That's what he was saying, so. But I heard it kind of ruined the girl because, I ain't going to say ruined, but I heard she was kind of upset because then she, like, unfollowed her whole family. Yeah, it's a little embarrassing. I would have unfollowed my dad, too. Yeah. It's a little bit invasive. Social media does not need to know everything. The public does not need to know. You know how I feel about what the public knows about my life. Oh, yeah. The public does not need to know everything, and I believe that's one of those lines that was crossed. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a problem with him being in his daughter's life like that. I just don't think that it had to be, you know, like you said, public like that. I mean, if they obviously agreed to that, I mean, because she is an adult, so she didn't have to agree to it. So they obviously had a good relationship where she agreed to. I just didn't think that he needed to go public with all that, you know. No, dad crossed the line. Yeah, that's not cool. I he, That's that whole mental health thing that DeMarco was talking about. Her mental health was not thought about when... That was thrown out there. Yeah. Sorry, baby girl. All right, here goes a story I think you might find interesting. Uh, Whitney Houston, best friend Robin, breaks the silence on their love affair. So they uh, they met each other in like a camp, and 
she's writing a book now saying that they were lovers and that Whitney actually called it off right before she signed the Clive Davis Arista and uh, said that they wouldn't be accepted. So they just stayed friends and they couldn't be physical anymore because Whitney gave her a blue Bible. It says, saying it basically, her mom didn't accept it saying that two women shouldn't be that close. And uh, so they never, never classified themselves as being a lesbian couple or a gay couple. Um, they just lived their lives, as they said. But I watched the Bobby Brown story, and Bobby um, pretty much knew that something was going on between. My whole thing, my take on it is what kind of best friend are you, Robin? You wait until your legendary friend is deceased, and then you want to write a book? Mm. I hope I don't have too many best friends like that. Right. Although if I do something, <laughs> everybody will know, because I don't mind telling. <laughs> <laughs> but still that's you did that's not that's not a best friend that's more of an opportunist than a best friend if you ask me yeah yeah um this story right here remember the uh, football player aaron hernandez yes he was fine i guess he crazy but he was fine see that's what demarco said i can't pick him well you know um he committed suicide Yes. So someone else is writing a book. Uh, uh, let me see. Hold on. I'm going to just read the first part to you. Uh, they say he committed um, murder. They said, did, did Aaron Hernandez commit murder to cover up an HIV diagnosis he wanted to keep hidden from the world? A new oh. bombshell investigation brings to light a possible dark secret the late NFL player was struggling with before his death. So it says that um, this stripper um, was ordered by, a male stripper was ordered by Aaron Hernandez. He came to the um, house to perform in front, I think it said 12 beefy guys and they were snorting cocaine and down in booze. The guy's name is Chad. And he says that um, he overheard Aaron Hernandez talking about the one guy who and he ended up murdering. He knows about he knows about the pills and he's not around anymore. And he was very paranoid. Now this is all hearsay. So, you know, he taking the word from a you know, exotic dancer. So but um at one point, Chad claimed the former pro athlete said he'd rather go to jail for fucking murder than have that shit get out. So That's that deal. I'm not saying that he is. I didn't know the man, but it's possible. You never know. You never know. It's all very sad if you ask me. Because he has children. Like, you know... Yeah, it's hard for me to like you. I'm, I'm with you on with the whole like the whole Whitney Houston thing. And, like, how's all this stuff coming out after he died? I mean, it makes like you said, it just makes for a good story, but because nobody else is here to, it's one sided. Yeah, very one sided. Yeah, it's it's one sided and it's not like I don't know. It's just not nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish, I wish, like, if I go, like, somebody could tell me all the things that people say about me after I'm gone. Like, I hope I know, at least so I can giggle. But that's the good thing about you. You live your life so open, so what can someone say? They lie. Yeah. I get lied on all the time. Really? Yeah. All right, what do you think about John Legend being... Uh, named People's Sexiest Man Alive, 2019. For me, I feel that it's a beautiful thing. Um, sexy is sometimes unconventional. I know that a lot of people were upset, but I don't think sexy, if you've ever been with somebody that's sexy, it's not just about the way they look, it's the way they carry themselves, it's their intelligence. For me, at least, now that I'm older, it's, it's being able to have an in-depth conversation it's that you can teach me something he seems to be 
a man who provides, who professes and protects. So what about that wouldn't be sexy? And it's just, that's just goes to show the difference between men and women, because if you ask, and, I, and I've heard the same, everything you said, I heard that from it. all three or four women that I talked to about this. They said the same thing. They describe him being sexy by what he does and how he acts. But if you ask a man what's sexy about a woman, it has nothing to do with how they act. It's all physical. How was the catering on set? Oh my God, we had collard greens. <laughs> Punky Brewster is with the business. Like for real, for real, you wake up in the morning and you go to get you some food. You got like egg sandwiches, enchiladas. Like we had choices. Mm. Our catering was serious. Wow. It wasn't like Hollywood salad, you know? It was like they got busy. So what's a typical day like where you like, um, like what time did you start? Um, some days I started at not one, a few days I started at nine. Some days I started at one. Another day I started at like 11, 15, no PM. No, it's about 9 AM, 9 AM. Yes. 9 AM. We started at 11 AM, 1 PM. It was different all the time. Oh, we also had black beans, rice and some black and yeah. some garlic chicken. Like our, our catering was the business. And what time would you guys be done? Um, Halloween, they let us out to take the kids trick or treating. We were out by four. Okay. Hate night, we were out probably like around nine ish. I don't know. We stayed and hung out for a while afterwards, but maybe around nine, nine thirty. Mm. Okay, so TV is the closest to a nine to five that you'll ever get in right. entertainment. It's not like a movie where you're there for like sixteen, seventeen, eighteen hours. I remember you told me that. Yeah. yeah, movies are way different. Gotcha. So it was overall, it was a good time, then, right? It's a dream come true. Yeah. Punky really is a dream come true. I pray that our show gets picked up. I pray that we come back. I need to go eat uh, at the catering again. Our caterers were the bomb. One day, actually, like um, the Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. We had this big old like Mexican catering where they had like this whole, it looked like a party. They brought out the tent, the, the uh, decorations, the food was ridiculous. Like they were over there cooking like everything you could think of, like tacos, you can get carne, you can get asada, you can get um, pork, you can get, you could just get anything. You can get like shrimp, anything that you could think of they had that was like, ceviche like everything it was just it was perfect they fed us well i remember you saying you you like mexican mexican food is that one of your favorites i love mexican food i love food from the caribbean i love like jamaican food i love you go to that restaurant do you remember i asked you what's your favorite restaurant out there and you told it to me i forget the name of it. it's versailles i did not get a chance to go to versailles because i was like too busy working yeah no, I didn't get, but I got Versailles on the set. Like, you know, they had black beans and rice and platano and chicken and, and garlic bread. So I was good. They covered everything, but no, definitely um, soul food, soul Latin food is my heart. Jamaican food, Caribbean food. Some aki salt fish. <laughs> <laughs> Beans and rice, some cabbage, some festival, some jerk chicken, some macaroni and cheese, <laughs> some black and all, some beans and rice. Like, I'm a happy girl. I'm a cheap date. <laughs> a burrito, some tacos. Yeah. I like soul food. Gotcha. Cool. And pizza. Yeah, that's, that's my weakness, pizza. Good pizza. Yeah, that's my weakness. I'll bake you a pizza, Courtney. I make good pizza. I make uh, fresh dough. Yeah. Yeah, I make bomb pizza. You make your own dough, huh? Yeah. Dope. I'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> How do you make dough? How do you get, what do you use? I don't even know what you use to make dough. Flour. <laughs> Water, sugar, oil, yeast, uh, okay. salt. Uh, 
basic ingredients, but I make bomb dough and I make bomb pizza. So do you like throw the dough up in the air? No, I'm not a weed.